Hey, how's it going? So we're going to be making this. I'm not going to be making this. I'm just going to talk through how to do it, right? So we have an app that has a server inside of its, itself. And then after one second, it fetches the data, right? So we have basically... We have both server and the app in the same folder. Does that make sense? So there is our backend, there, there is the server. And there is our front end, there is the app. And they both sit inside the same folder. Like normally you separate them, but this is just to, to show you how to do it together. Okay? So the most important thing is here is not to forget that you are working inside two separate folders. Okay? So you have to remember, you have to pay attention to the terminal. So the commands to move between, you only need one command, which is CD, which is change directory, right? So you want to go into front end, we do CD, front end. Boom. Now we are in here, effectively speaking. We're sitting in here. You want to go to back end, we can do CD dot dot, which is go back once. And then CD backend now we are in backend does that make sense so as opposed to manually clicking through folders i'm talking about like let's say you have your um front end in here let's say you have your front end in here and then your server in here so as opposed to manually clicking through them and opening two uh, visual studio codes you just using terminal to jump between the folders if that makes sense it's the same process it's the same process so uh, CD stands for change directory. Double dots is to go back. One directory, right? Um, to see the list of directories, it's LS. So you see, you in, in this specific uh, folder, we have two directories, back end and front end. Okay? One second, I'm going to sneeze. All right. So, I'm assuming, let, let's build the server, right? So, we go CD. Now, first thing you do is you create in the root folder, two folders. One is backend, one is frontend. So, let's assume, I'm assuming you already have done this, right? So, let's go into backend. So, CD. So, CD, backend. Now, the process is exactly the same. Right, so you do your npm install express, nodemon. Now you will need course. You will need course for this, right? So um, in the back end, create your uh, npm init, which is initializing package JSON. Now remember, you have now two package JSONs. Don't confuse them. One is for server, one is for back end. So the server one is sits inside the back end folder and then um, Client one, which is your app, sits inside the front end folder, right? So remember, they, there's two of them now, right? So you do your usual jazz in here, which is uh, install your server, install course, otherwise it's not going to work, right? And then um, you can put, you see, I like when you, I just created a simple um, root, which is a data, and data sends um, basically data. And I, and, I, and I put all the data into utilities. So this is data. I got it from... I'll show you where I got it from. I basically copy and pasted it, honestly. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it in the description below. So you'll be able to see where are my APIs. Okay, so I got it from here. I need to make a list of to-do. To-do... Uh, post data in the link below. Okay, so you can just copy and paste it, basically. Literally just copy and paste it. And then I put it into utilities, which is a separate folder. Because it looks like shit when you post it into... Like you see, like, I effectively tried to do this. And it just looks like d disgusting BS, do you know what I mean? So... I decided, you know, I'm going to put it into a 
I'm gonna put it into just a utilities folder and then from there I'm going to uh, extract it but you don't have to do it you can put it like in here if you want you know like say const you can do it like in here probably is the easiest const data equals this and then data is being responded whichever way you want okay whichever way you want now the only thing um, I'm pretty sure a lot of react developers are gonna look at this and you're gonna get confused by the module exports right so when you're exporting a module uh, you're creating your uh, JavaScript file and then as opposed to writing let me just go you see normally when you work in react you do default export uh, export default data I think you do like this export default data now it does not work because this is a node.js environment right so what you do is module dot exports equals data and the way to import this data is the way to import this data is to do require because normally you do like this import data from and then you have your root which is utils right but because we're working in modules they are different right you have to do const data equals require and then the path other than that everything is the same all right so i'm assuming you know how to build your express server and you have already done this right the second thing you need to remember is you need to have a command to run the server so my command is serve node mon server js now i'm assuming you know how to run server and node mon right because i mean it's just like super basic shite okay so okay so that's the back end done right that's the back end done so we can close this we can close this all right now let's deal with the front end so we're gonna cd back now we're gonna cd front and now we're in the front end fold now to install typescript well i use typescript or what you can use create react app you can use vanilla html doesn't matter i went with create react app and typescript because i do everything in typescript nowadays right now you go here i'm gonna link this in the description below copy this thing A standard like standard create react app stuff the only difference the only difference is that to in, you see where it says my app normally it creates a folder and it sticks um your entire app into that folder which name named whatever you want which is like my app my mobile app whatever but if you want to stick it in this specific folder that you're in yeah you have to put dot like this and then enter and it will install your entire app in front end right so that's the only 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 reminder that you need to do okay so then basically um let me just pause this for a sec okay so where did i stop i stopped at i think your front end right okay so when you do your front end you install your application um you fetch your data from the component right now the only thing you have to remember is that once you deploy your server right you need to make sure that because you see when your server is running it's running on local host <laughs> whatever but when you do your production when you create your app you have to swap the connection string which is this one here so now your server is not running on localhost 500 it's running on render which is this link here and we can we can kind of test this by just by running by running this for example like this now it's gonna have nothing in it of course but if we do data forward slash data it should give us the 
data. There you go. So we are fetching this effectively speaking, right? So just bear this in mind. Okay, so once this is completed, once this is completed, push everything into your repository through the Git um, GitHub, right? Now next, log into your render. So I'll show you the process. Uh, log into your render. The new okay. So first one is gonna be basically what we're doing is we are connecting to the same repository and GitHub, but only we're changing the folder structure. Well, we're not changing it, but we're just pointing to a different folder structure. So for, <coughs> for server, we're gonna do web server. Okay, click on the name. So this is gonna be this thing. Oh, whoops. Click on connect. Then put in the name, I put front end. Oh, whoops, back end. Just put in back end in here. Because this is server, right? So server is back end. So this is gonna be uh, back into, well, YouTube. So we just put YouTube like this. Okay, in here you select node, runtime node. Make sure this is node. And then root directory should be dot and this is backend like this now build command you do not need so ignore this and then start command is going to be npm run serve so start command is going to be anything that you put into where's our backend package server yeah so this command here all right so put it in here once you click Once you click on create, obviously it's going to work, right? Now, the only thing to make sure that check your GitHub, because the first time I made a commit for all the files, there was nothing in the GitHub for some reason. I don't know why that was. So my render was saying that, oh, you cannot find a folder or it cannot find this build failed, blah, blah, blah. When you see this, check your GitHub. Most of the time, that's where the problem is. Okay, so this is so this will give you uh, the backend. So you see, this is exactly how this thing is set up. Client server backend. That's the repository. Backend root directory. Build ignored. Build ignored. Start command npm run serve. Auto deploy automatic, and that's it. So now it will give you the connection string. So that's that's where the server is. Okay, so once we have the server link, obviously we go into our uh, application and we apply it so that now you can fetch data um, from your URL. So you see, that's the URL. You can do it this way if you want. Just put the URL in here like this. Forward slash data. So like, you know, if you're like a beginner, you'll do it probably this way. But I prefer to do it through a variable because then it's very easy to swap a variable. If you're in the development, you activate this, comment out this, and then that's how you swap between development and production. Production meaning live website. Uh, development means you're working on it, right? Okay, so once this is done, Right, you want to basically host your front end, right? So the front end, there's two ways to do it. There's two ways to do it, right? One way is you will need your build command, right? So I'm talking about the build command right now. There's two ways to do the build command. You can either, um, you can either go to, remember we have two folders. So we're talking about front end right now. Package JSON, oh no, git ignore. So normally git ignore does not push build into the GitHub repository. So if you want to do everything from here, you need to remove this, right? Just completely remove it. And then it will push the build into the GitHub. So that's gonna be your GitHub. 
normally there is no build, but build is going to be in here, like a folder, which is called build. And then the way you connect to it, you go to render. Um, well, let's create new. It's going to be a static website because you are now working with front end. We're connecting to our repository. Give it a name, which is front end YouTube. So this stays the same. This has to change to front end like this. Now, here's where slightly tricky part, right? So publish directory is going to be build. Now, if you've done it this way, where you removed this part here, git ignore, your production, your build, my apologies, your build directory actually exists. Okay. So then you can ignore the build command. Now, alternative way of doing it is to get render to perform the build function for you. And then you will need the build command in here. Does that make sense? So in here you are doing the build and then just pushing it into the GitHub and then render effectively um, reads of the repository, which is uh, your build because it's going to be in here, right? So your build, oh shit. Oh, okay, good. No, wait, where did it go? God damn it. Yeah, I hate when this happens. You see, it's because I'm using this, um, I'm using this um, Windows taskbar or whatever it's called. You see it's on the top. So that's why I sometimes run into this. It's probably going to close everything, right? Oh, it's still working. Okay. So I need to... Oh my God, how do I do this? Hold on, let me just pause. Yeah, so the only way to do it was to close it like this, and then... So we have to go to our GitHub again. Yeah, so... Yeah, so you see we're in front-end, and build, build folder is going to be in here. So naturally you point to it, create static site, and it will create it, right? But I've done it slightly differently. I've done npm run build, if you add this command in here... And then the render will perform the terminal build for you. So the repository is going to appear inside the render. And then it's going to read off it. Right? So it's not going to be in here. It's going to be inside the render. And that's it. So that's the way I've done it. Honestly, there's really no difference. And then you create your site. And then once it's finished building, you're going to have your front-end website like this. You see? I'll show you the settings. So there is the name, there is the repository, main root directory dot front end, npm run build, and then public directory is build like this. And then that's about it. So now you see you can go to here and then you will see the website. There's our data. So this is fully hosted on render. And uh, it has both uh, static and web server. But honestly, for web server, like for static websites, I personally prefer Netlify. Because it has a lot more space in it. Like they give you... <coughs> unlimited amounts of projects up to I think it's like 10 gigabytes or something like this right I, I'm not even using 100 megabytes I think right but in here you can only have like five I think projects so you see there is like a limit so that's why it's good this is good for servers because you only normally you only just need one server and that's about it okay so there you go that's how you do it take care bye bye